We're here in the beautiful Etruscan city of Arezzo in Tuscany on the finishing straight of stage eight of this year's Giro d'Italia. Now, we know what you're thinking. You recognise this finish straight. Of course you do. It was used in 2014 and 2015 as a stage finish in Terreno Adriatico. But in the Giro d'Italia this year, it's not just a stage finish because it also marks the 31.6 kilometre to go point. And being the Giro d'Italia, it's not just any old finishing loop. Oh no, it contains a few surprises, including gravel roads or sterato. On a second category climb. Should we give it a go? Let's go take it out. Okay, so 31.6 k's to go. Got my foot in first time as well. Yes! Fish bump. Prior to that first time through Arezzo, the riders would have covered 154.4 kilometres, making the whole stage 186 k. Yeah, and aside from the Alpha de Potti, which we're going to be climbing soon and just looms on the horizon, the only other real obstacle on a primarily flat day is a third cat climb after 120 k. So the sort of stage that you'd thought you'd see an early break establish a pretty healthy lead. But if you're a GC contender, it's the Coca-Cola de Potti or the Alpha de Potti that could drive your potty. But for one lucky rider, it could provide a potty of gold. Love it. Great so here we are on the lower slopes of the final climb of the day, the second category, Alpa du Potti. Just going through the town of San Polo and the gradient actually really starts to rear its head very early. Yeah, legs are going to sting a bit. The climb in total is 8.6 kilometres long, but it averages 6.5%. But clearly, it's not a steady gradient. Yeah, the first part of the climb is tarmac. It's quite a nice surface. And in about a kilometre's time, we reach the Strato. You know, one rider who I bet wishes he was here. Who's that, sorry? Daniele Bernati. Ah. Born in Arezzo. Oh, from Tinkoff. Yeah. He always finishes well in Arezzo, too. I tell you what, another famous person from Arezzo, Guido di Arezzo. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. The uh, father of modern musical notation. Indeed, born in 991, one of those foremost musical minds of the, of the Middle Ages. We're nearly on the Storato. Boom! Whoa. We're on. So, the climb all the way to the top of the Alpe de Potti is now this road surface, known in Italy famously as a Storato and characterised so beautifully every year in the Strada Bianca. But this year, when the Giro is all uphill. Now, you might be wondering why we're going so slowly, but the fact is, the gradient is currently at 14%, and that's on gravel. That is the steepest point of this climb, but it's going to cause a selection, surely. And the worst thing is, Sai, I've only got one gear left. I've got none. The one thing that always strikes me about stages where there's a real big challenge at the end is your rider's psychology. Yeah. If you're motivated going into this climb, if you're ready to attack, you're at such an advantage to someone who feels like they're on the back foot. And that's sometimes where the biggest gaps open, aren't they? And it will be interesting so, to see which of the main GC guys actually know this climb as well. Yeah. Because I think some local knowledge on where to measure effort on this climb will be absolutely invaluable. There's lots of changes of road surface. At the moment, the climb has been relentlessly steep, but I think in a, in a bit, there is a bit of a plateau, but the road is primarily good, but the last K has been a bit more rutted. Yeah. I'd say one thing that could throw a curveball onto this stage is weather. Because although this is pretty hard packed right now, we've seen what happens when you hit Strada Bianca in the wet, and it's pretty grim. It was a, do you remember that stage that Kel Evans won back in, in 2010? We used the word epic, but that truly was an absolutely amazing stage. And every wider looked like a ghost as they crossed the line, covered in that white mud. As I say, it will be an epic day if the heavens open and there is rain forecast. Within around a kilometre from the top now, and uh, the gradient's still very steady at around six, 
or seven percent by the start of gradient you can get into a nice rhythm and it's sort of really opened out a little bit now where the wind can play a little bit of a part too and it's definitely worth mentioning again Tuscany one of the most beautiful parts of Italy if not the world although the riders won't get a lot of a chance to look at the views just to our left Before the final kick up to the finish, there's another little fast downhill section, but it's not much rest at all, maybe 300 meters at most. And then as we're about to hit, the gradient really starts to bite. We're actually riding over rocks on a lot of this climb as well. As you can just see on the left-hand side, it doesn't break the rhythm too much, but definitely harder to get into that smooth groove. The suit riders, like Jacob Fulsang, the next mountain biker, you can see him really flying up here. Well, I tell you what, I'm not sure whether we're just less fit, but that seems to be one of the hardest second category climbs I think I've ever ridden. I think I'll have to tend to agree with you. I think the average gradient of 6.5% is definitely skewed because of the amount of downhill sections and flat sections because the vast majority of the uphill bits are pretty brutal at around kind of 9, 10%, even 11%, and that's a really, really tough climb, and that's gonna, that's gonna sort the field out. It is. Now, what's coming up is 18 kilometers to the finish. And what's gonna be really interesting is to see just how technical the descent is. The more technical it is, the more likely a rider is gonna be able to stay away and hold off a chasing pack. But thankfully, it's tarmac and not gravel. Well that was the vast majority of the descent of the Alpha del Posse and the bottom half in particular, if wet, which we experienced, could be pretty dicey. Yeah it could. What do you think? Can a solo rider stay clear down there? It'd be quite difficult to bring you on back, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, there's a few sections again that kick up. There's a, a kilometre of flat and then there's a, a short drag that I think will hurt the legs a little bit. But I think there's definitely the opportunity for a couple of riders or a small break to stay clear down there, definitely. But 10k to go now. That's 10k of hard riding. Let's give it another note. Well, that finishing circuit is going to make for a really, really exciting stage. Yeah, it's a real racer stage, not a super hard mountain stage, but one where you have to be fully concentrating all day long, and one where you could lose the Giro, but not necessarily win it. Yeah, if we've learned one thing about the Giro in the last few years, is that riders are prepared to race for seconds on every stage. And today, this stage could really give people that opportunity. Who's your favourite? I'm going to say Valverde actually, I think he's obviously got the form to go with the climb and then this finish, long drag on paving stones, he's a fast finisher. I'm going to go for Jakob Fulzang wing on his own. Really? Yeah. But in the form of mountain biker? As a foil for Nibali, he's going to love that climb and he'll, even, he'll love that descent even more so I'm going for him and he's going good, he's going good too. Right, now in the meantime you will undoubtedly be wanting more Giro d'Italia content here on GCN. So if you click just up there, then you get through to our playlist with all of our Giro videos in one spot. And if you want to see our latest GCN show, how about clicking just down here. And now we are going to go get some lunch before it absolutely lashes down. And don't forget to subscribe, click on the globe which will probably be around... Just above our rapidly is. disappearing bodies.